Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. In this episode, we're going to cover our March Test and Measurement Issues Special Focus section on cable and connectors. As mentioned last week, we're doing four of these special focus sections this year. These sections are carved out as an ebook after the magazine is published and get additional electronic distribution. It also makes for a nice mini magazine for our readers on a specific topic and provides our advertisers with lead gen, so it's kind of a unique product. As a reminder, the cover story is written by Andrew Landry of Aravant, and he covers the history of noise sources and their advancements toward terahertz frequencies. So, Eric, what do we have for technical articles in this special focus section? Thanks, Pat. Uh, the cover feature for the special focus section is from EJL Wireless, and it looks at the RF connector opportunity in base stations. And the article does a good job of segmenting the market along with forecasts, trends, and uh, some good insights into the RF connector vendor ecosystem. It also has several nice cutaways of uh, where the connectors are located in the massive MIMO architectures. Uh, so that's a good read. We also had a good article from Times Microwave about the growing challenge from counterfeit cables and assemblies. Uh, so the article looks into some of the risks and how a user can identify counterfeits and clones, and uh, that's becoming a big issue. And finally, Junkosha, who is big in the cable space, does a Technology Innovator of the Year Award. Uh, so we have a piece on who made the shortlist for this award, and they address the entire electronics industry. Uh, so the summaries of what companies and universities are doing is uh, really quite interesting. Uh, so take a look at all those articles. Yeah, and for products in the special focus section, we had a product feature from Radial on their SMP Max board-to-board -board connector line, and they're now offering better performance at a lower cost, so they're really evolving that product line. We also had a tech brief from Fairview Microwave covering a mini SMP female to SMPS female Vita 67.3 backplane adapter, and that operates to 65 gigahertz, so a lot of good board-to-board -board connector technology there. We had a special guest join us this week, Zeno Gauchev, Marketing Director for MEMS and Inertial Sensor Group at Analog Devices, discussed how MEMS and IMUs are used in steering microwave systems. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. And so why would a microwave system need an IMU? So, you know, the primary function of an IMU and a microwave communication system is to provide feedback sensing on antenna sta stabilization systems, uh, you know, such as a horn antenna or a, on a gimbal or in a beam forming phase array. Uh, and this is especially common in airborne ground base, you know, surface marine type uh, vehicles. So whereas, you know, as I understand it, the alignment of an antenna's primary lobe has a direct impact on the receiver's signal strength, which directly then impacts the communication reliability, data rates, and even the power requirements of the transmission site. So in essence, you know, it's very similar to uh, the concept of image stabilization on, on cameras or optical sensing systems. IMUs are a new area for us, so glad we covered that with ADI. Turning to the news, Infinite Electronics announced its intent to sell KP performance antennas and radio waves businesses to Alive Telecommunications. Also, I saw that Gas Labs announced the sale of its portfolio company, Mission Microwave Technologies, to an affiliate of JF Lehman Company. And then I saw that 5G Open Innovation Lab announced its Batch 9 cohort, 11 startups carefully curated from around the globe to embark on the 5G Open Innovation Lab's spring program. It's now its fifth year, and the lab has built a thriving ecosystem of 129 startups, and they're supported by partners like AT&T, Comcast, Microsoft, Intel, and VMware by Broadcom and more. So, Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, uh, you know my affinity for market forecasts and the future, and uh, unfortunately, as we're all starting to suspect, I think, things are a bit less than rosy. Uh, Deloro just released a report on telecom equipment revenues that points out that the market for RAN, transport, mobile core, really the wireline and wireless backbone equipment, uh, which had seen five years of stable growth to the midpoint of 2023, turned down fast enough to close 2023 at a 5% decline. Uh, and they're forecasting flat to possibly another 5% decline in revenue in 2024. 
And related to that, they also released a broadband access report where they estimate that market declined by 9% year over year in 2023. Uh, They do anticipate a significant ramp in Wi-Fi 6E and 7 shipments. Uh, So maybe that's the silver lining. For events, Eric and I just returned from the satellite show in Washington, D.C. The evolution of beam steering antenna arrays for SATCOM is something I really like to follow. There are many companies now offering various beam steering solutions for flat panel arrays in the SATCOM market. Some news around this was Hanway Phaser announced it will release its land antenna for mobile communications to the market in Q3 this year. The Phaser L3300B is an active electronically steered antenna which has been developed for commercial and military use. We also saw Kaimeta announce their Osprey U8HGL, and this is a hybrid GeoLeo terminal purpose belt for military users, and that's shipping, and it marks its first commercially available multi-orbit terminal. And also, ThinCom announced their ThinAir GT line of airborne solutions for government customers. Plus, with Telesat, they announced an expanded development partnership to certify Thin Air KA2517 antenna for the Telesat Lightspeed Leo satellite market. And uh, Microwave Journal is doing a panel session March 26th, so coming up very soon. Will flat panel beam steering arrays meet the SATCOM challenge? And we have panelists from Anoki Wave Corvo, Antrust, and ARA. So go to our website and register under webinars. Eric, what trends were you seeing at Satellite? Well, yeah, Pat, it was uh, certainly a whirlwind of activity, both on the floor and for us. And to amplify on that beam steering antenna idea, uh, there was a lot of mention of hybrid at the show. And uh, this means taking advantage of the benefits of different orbits. And that's where steerable arrays shine, uh, where you can have separate beams targeting satellites in different orbits. And the industry is also envisioning hybrid networks that incorporate satellites with terrestrial 4G and 5G networks, and use different frequencies. And uh, the satellite industry appears to be looking to enable seamless connectivity to the point where the user doesn't know or care uh, how they get connectivity. Uh, So the industry is starting to talk about the same things that the wireless industry is talking about. Uh, Disaggregation, SDR, virtualization, network edge, uh, flexibility, And it seems the best way to do that is with a hybrid network of resources. And it was also interesting to hear people say they are seeing uh, the first signs of participation from the wireless telcos uh, at the satellite show. So it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. And that wraps up this episode of Frequency Matters. Our sponsors are RFMW and Analog Devices. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. Analog Devices is a leader in the design, manufacture, and marketing of a broad portfolio of high-performance analog, mixed signal, and digital signal processing integrated circuits used in virtually all types of electronic equipment. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, So please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a subscriber. And thanks for watching, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.